today I'm going to show you guys how to install a Walbro 485 fuel pump into a 90 to 96 Nissan 300ZX. So to remove your parcel tray, first what you want to do is remove each of these covers as they will give you access to your bolts, nuts, etc. One, two, three, four, ten millimeter. One, two, three, four screws. Once you remove them, your parcel tray will come up. If you need to get access up here, say to have an easier way to get to your fuel pump control unit, which you can reach and unplug just from here, there will be one here and one up here on each side and also there will be one just like this on this center panel then for this to remove you'll have that one bolt a screw here you'll have a couple pop tabs here and across the bottom and that screw and then it will lift out it will also latch over here onto the middle uh, center console and once you remove all them, pop the clips, you can remove this. You'll have access to your fuel pump control module. And just the parcel tray will give you access to your fuel tank. And just a little gist of what you would need to do if you were installing the pump, say, from factory. You just remove it. The hose clamp here. Disconnect both of the connections from the fuel pump and unhook the rubber insulator hanger so you can unbolt it and you'll want to rotate these out of the way so you can pull it out now your hose which you will need submersible line roughly eight eight and a half inches long but you will want it to be just the same location where the stock pump was. The only difference is you will have a lot more submersible fuel hose than you did from the factory because they're actually I've got an example. Pretty much this sits in between this and you can see roughly where the pickup would be so that's about roughly how long you make your fuel line I already installed this but I removed it because of the wiring issue which if you're here just take care of it while you're here we're back from Lowe's they said they had four but they had three because go figure someone took it out the pack and stole it these are the well nuts. You need two. Since I got three, got the three pack of bolts, fresh washers, washers, and terminals. I already opened them. Purchase some nuts. So essentially, <coughs> what I will be doing here, is since this is already the ground, I will be drilling that out to be able to fit the well nut. We'll drill another hole about back here so I can fit another well nut. Basically I'm just get to drilling. Essentially about right here is where my ground will go instead of this. I guess you don't actually drill this out and you put your power over here. apologize if you can't hear me very well because the rain I try to keep it short and sweet to compensate but I've got 
Both of my holes grilled. This is one of the well nuts in place without anything in it. You'll want to take a normal grill bit instead of being like me and use one of these stepper bits and drill this and clean both sides so you don't have a sharp bunch of extra metal. I've got my eyelet drilled to fit this bolt. And I'll just thread this in. But here, you see the bolt starting to come through. Just keep tightening it. You don't need to tighten it too much. As you can see, I'm only using my hand to tighten. On the back side, it mushrooms out, performing a seal. So don't get too tight or you'll crack the rubber. I got grade eight hardware. I'm sure it doesn't matter. But Perfect. It's not splitting. But I have already soldered these two connections on of this clip, which was I, how I thought you were supposed to do it in the beginning. And as a result, I've totally messed up this terminal. So just that's why I'm making this video. All you do is you're gonna hit these joints with the soldering iron and while you do that just pull out on each of these wires your ground and your power and it'll melt this and you'll just be able to pop it out you can clean it up if you want i'm just going to leave it as it's not going to be powered and it's really not going to matter it accordingly so I can ensure it is long enough to go to both of these spots perfect length which I'm sure that's why they sell this kit this way and remove some of this shielding so I can crimp on some eyelets so now I've got my harness sub harness, thread it in. So what you will do now, if I can show you without damaging my float, your wires will more than likely be different than mine. My power is my orange, not my red. Place it on. Install your nut. Right, you probably want to be mindful of what direction that these face, as they may cause issues when trying to install it until it's snug, as it doesn't need to be crazy tight. Just until it starts turning on itself, that's how you know it's tight. Same applies for over here. Washer first. Terminal. Crush washer. And nut. Alright. Now the real test. Bam. It's literally the source 
of all my issues. Getting zero power here through the bulkhead. I would, I could touch here on this solder joint and the other end of this wire and I would get continuity but I could not pr place it there and through the wire up on the top side as I would get no continuity. This is technically the write up from the Nick Letson. I think it's his uh, write up. So it's definitely not my credit but it's just a lot easier to visualize it. And what I'm going to do is use one of these old looms and make like a sub harness and I will probably cut a hole through this just like they did in the write up and feed it through. I'm debating on using my own connector say like the stock one and just redoing the pins so that way I can just have a plug and play set up but uh, I'm I, thinking about plugging it into the factory location just for now just so I can make sure that this wiring was the issue and then what I'll do is I will run an individual line like uh, its own wiring straight from the battery Chopper off. Come for it. As soon as it starts to, the whole thing starts to look tacky. I mean, it's still not the prettiest, but usually I don't go to this extent. Now to find some appropriate sheathing. If this stuff was new, it would definitely go together better. Throws it to here. Probably just go ahead and put one about every six inches. That definitely looks snazzy. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna route this so it's kind of easier to install. Take this, I'm gonna drill it from the inside so I can get an appropriate size, say to pop this through. There you go. So, feed this through hardest part will be the zip strips as you can see there it is pretty good seal here all right what i did here for this since this set does not give you any actual spades it only gives you terminal connectors i took i took this out the original not the original connector but a factory connector and I took the spade off so that way I will be able to just I could if I want just put it into this harness I think we're good let's make sure there's nothing in the tank that has crawled up here and fallen in make sure you have a new o-ring as most of the time when you remove them they will stretch and they will not be able to go back so now all i did is have slightly rotated the fuel pump so when it is mounted it will not be forcing against the edge of the baffling and the bottom of the fuel tank
tighten too much on your first time around as you might misalign the hole for the next one and end up stripping the gas tank. But you always want to make sure your clamps are on before you go actually placing your hoses back on as this is really not that fun to do. Side. At least to get one side started and you can pull it the rest of the way through. Now, go ahead and put a couple of these in just to hold this down for a moment. Stock slash factory wiring. As you can see, this orange wire is way thicker. Well, you can't see, but this wire versus this wire large difference when you're doing this fuel pump upgrade you will be required to upgrade your wiring at least you should as if not you'll be in the same boat as me stuck on a day you really want to go drive your car now if you'd like to keep your connector you'll just want to plug it into the corresponding spot like a fuel pump priming. <laughs> All right guys, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. I'll do my best that I can to answer to you to the best of my ability at that about to take her out for a little drive so part two will be coming i can't tell you when but that will be actually wiring it from the battery with a fuse and a relay but anyways thanks for watching see you next time